Hi everyone, how are you guys? I am, oh, you know what? I forgot to check my internet. And sure enough, sorry about that, you guys. I usually try to check my internet before I go on and I actually forgot about it. I forgot to check my internet. So I'm on my good internet. We have two internet connections and I have to use a, a jet pack um, when I want to go live to boost my regular internet signal. So I try to make sure that I'm connected to that and not my other internet when I'm going live. Sometimes I forget. Um, so I am just playing, I'm painting and I thought you guys might want to come on and watch. Um, a lot of people have asked me about this finish. I have no makeup on today. We're in my garage. I'm painting. This is a judgment free kind of day. I'm super tired. Um, Oh, there. Now I see you. Hi, Erin. Hey, Cindy. Um, you were just looking at my swimming. No, I'm not swimming yet. It's still light outside. So here, I'll show you guys. This is, uh, it's still, all my kids' bikes are out there. And that's a piece I need to work on. Uh, it's still light outside. In fact, uh, this is about the time of day. Where are we? Wow, it's 7.15 already. When I um, need to start watching my light because I do have some pictures I need to take. And I watch for when the shadows fall over my house and they stop casting shadows into my workspace on my staging wall. And that's when I can take photos. So I don't know how long I'm going to stay on because I do have photos I need to take. But here's what I'm doing. I'm painting with vinegar. You guys saw me do this look just recently. Oh, thank you, Amanda. I don't feel beautiful today, but thank you. Um, so I'm just going to be painting and I'll kind of talk as I'm going and I'll check my comments every once in a while. It's really hot here, so I'm trying to keep my brushes wet. I don't want my paint drying on my brushes, but I'm playing with vinegar right uh, right now. I'm not playing. I mean, I kind of know what I'm doing, um, but I'll, I'll kind of talk you through this. So my colors, well, I have a base on here. My base is Dixbell chocolate and what I put down here? Sawmill gravy. Sawmill gravy. Now, here's what's funny. My base is the colors I don't want to use. But I chose them because the colors that go over top are going to be the ones I do want to use. And then those will be the ones underneath will be what just shows through a little bit. So that's what I thought about is I thought I picked colors that would contrast with what I'm going to put over them, but aren't exactly the same. And over the top, I'm using um, Stormy Seas, Vintage Duck Egg, Coffee Bean, and I'm going to put some, um, some, what did I get out? sandbar or french linen down here oh gosh man lynn thank you you guys are being really nice today and i appreciate that i'll take i'll take all the lies i can get today i'm really tired um so here's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna go ahead and introduce my sandbar i'm gonna call this sandbar you guys are gonna see it's my flea market decor this was a limited edition line that came out from Dixie Bell, but it's only a slight shade off of Sandbar. These are discontinued, but I have it. So I'm gonna call it Sandbar. Um, and I'm gonna put this over my sawmill gravy. French linen I think would work great too. I've got a drip right here. I'm gonna wipe away with my finger. You will get texture on this look. Um, you will get texture on this look. So what I'm spraying today, you guys usually see my spray bottles are filled with water. Those are the, all the unmarked ones, and this is 90% of them. I have one spray bottle that's marked with, you can kind of read it, it says vinegar. It's a 50-50 mix of white vinegar and water. That's what I'm spraying in this little one. You might see me use some water too, and that's going to be this one here. This is just water, but notice that I'm going to be using vinegar most of the time. I will probably use this entire bottle um, spraying this. This is one of the small ones. This is one of the one, little ones you get from Sally Beauty Supply. And this is one of the Dixie Belle ones. So I will probably go through all this vinegar. I tend to use quite a bit. So like I said, I put um, sawmill gravy down here because I want it to contrast with what I put over top. Okay, I just tried, that was my sand. Let's, let me try the French linen. And French linen might be my color. I want a little more contrast than that sandbar is giving me. I'm going to show you guys French linen and sandbar next to each other. This is French linen. It's just ever so slightly deeper. And I think this might be what I want, but I tried this. So let's go ahead and try it. 
just going to use my same brush because I only have touched it into my paint that one time. You know, I'm going to put this away. This is water too, but it's going to confuse you guys when you see that one. So I'm just going to use the one with the red lid so you know the red is water and the white is all in. You know, um, so I figured while I was on today, I think I, I'm going to like the French linen better. It's a little more grayish. So my customer said, this is a, a custom order. My customer sent me pictures of some decor she has going in her house. And I'm pulling colors out of there. In particular, there was a chair with some blue and beige stripes on it that was really pretty. I just did this look on a coffee bar. And I'm basically doing that same thing, but I'm um, using her colors. I figured I'd talk on a few things while I'm on here. Okay, I'm spraying my vinegar. What does vinegar do to your paint? I'm gonna bring you guys in here. Vinegar makes your paint separate when it drips. You guys see all this in here? One thing I'll say about Dixie Belle, all paints have strengths and weaknesses. Dixie Belle is not the most um, some paints separate more than others with vinegar. So what I'll say is, um, is you guys, I'm, I'm using my coffee bean and I'm brushing with a, um, vertical brush stroke is what I'm going to use primarily tonight. And a very soft hand and I'm just kind of streaking this into each other. I don't want it to be too drippy. So I'm going to control some of these drip marks and brush them, brush back into them. And it adds texture. Um, and then I'm giving myself a fresh coat of coffee bean and I'm gonna let it drip into where I just put that French linen. So I, I want a little bit of wet paint. I already have this kind of dripping into each other and I'm gonna control my drips by brushing them back. But now I want the coffee bean to drip into, I need a little bit of water. I don't want the paint setting up. I need it to drip. I need it to move still. So that gave me some wet coffee bean. And this will give me my wet French linen. And then I'm going to let them run into each other. Now, this is going to be multi-layers. So this is my second layer because my base layer is this so my second layer um i may even have another layer okay i'm spraying this with vinegar now i don't like to spray it so much that it just drips completely because i want to control these drips i want them to stop at a certain point not just keep going down where it just floods onto my floor that's not the point Oh, oh, Lori, caviar and red with the burlesque transfer, like, um, not, or like, a um, muscadine wine would be really pretty with that one. Can you turn my light on for me? Other one. That didn't come on. There you go. Thank you. Yeah, you have light. Okay. I'm going to lower you guys down because you guys want to see this. I'm going to put you guys into the paint. I'm getting knee deep in this paint you don't need to watch me i'll just be talking in the background okay watch my paint how it's going to start dripping move it so you don't have comments can you guys see it's running into each other in these skinny little drip marks and then the chocolate underneath is kind of peeking through okay so i'm doing that with a little bit of my this is my vinegar see vinegar And I'm going to let them run. Uh, over here's a good spot. See, I get spots I like and I get spots that I don't like. And as I don't like them, I will come back and I'm going to control them. Number one, I don't want it pooling here. So I'm going to brush this liquid out. There's a lot of controlling what the water and the vinegar are going to want to do. And then, so I really like this part over here. This ran really well. I really like what this did, but I don't care for this spot right here. I'm going to brush in some of my, uh, this is, I ended up using French linen. So let me get rid of sandbar. I didn't use sandbar. Put it away. Don't get it out. French linen was the winner. 
So I'm going to use French linen and French linen, sawmill gravy, coffee bean, chocolate, and Stormy Seas vintage duck egg. So that each section has two layers of color. So you see the colors peeking through each other. It looks like a solid color from far away, but you're going to see these colors peeking through each other. So I'm going to, I, I didn't like where that spot dripped. So I'm going to add a little bit more of my French linen. And then I'm going to tell it to drip again. Try again. You did not do good. Try again. I get a little spot and I just work small areas at a time, controlling those drips, telling it what I want it to do. Um, what I was going to say is there are some paints that drip and separate better than Dixie Belle does. You can make Dixie Belle drip, but, um, I, you know, we all know who Dion from the Turquoise Iris is. Her style of painting is very drippy and she uses a different paint because of that. So that's, you know, these are all things to consider when you're choosing a, a paint to use is what is your painting style? What do you want the paint to do? Because all paints react differently. I like Dixie Belle because I have the option. Dixie Belle lets me, um, this is my Stormy Seas. Dixie Belle lets me do either. I can get drippy looks with it. I can get super clean looks with it. I can do distressing with it. Some paints don't distress as well. Um, so that was my Stormy Seas. I'm going to spray my brush with water just because I, these are drying really fast and I want to keep it wet. Okay, I still really like this over here. Do you see that veiny look that it gets in the paint? I like that I've got a little bit of the chocolate showing through right here. I've got some chocolate through, showing through it here. Let me tell you guys my vision. I hope I was working up top and you couldn't even see. That's why I got to back it up. Um... I mean, I like the veining in here. It's really pretty. This is going to have a compass rose around it. I'm going to have a, add a compass rose. And then I've got these letters that are going to go. They'll be painted. Um, I'm going to have letters around it. And then a compass rose stencil and my hardware in the middle. You guys see where I'm going? And then inside I've got a pretty paper uh, with a kind of a nautical theme on it. Yeah, these colors are really pretty. I did it, the, the original piece I did, I did with um, Rusty Nail up here. And then I used cotton and drop cloth down below. But this, this customer has a little bit different colors in her house. I still don't like this spot right here. Like, it's giving me grief. I'm just going to brush it out. I'm actually going to try giving myself a little bit more coffee bean and make my coffee bean run differently. An artist brush would work for this because it's so deliberate. It looks accidental, but it's so deliberate. And then I'm going to make them run again. Just a little mist of my spray bottle. Vinegar separates the paint. Yes, Lori, it separates the paint. Vinegar makes it finger out. This is a great example right here. See how it makes the paint finger like not a... Uh, here, um, you, you kind of got to see what it does with water next to it to be able to compare. I also want to talk about this. My top is finished. It's a wood stained top and I'm getting paint onto it, but it has gator hide over the top already. So what that means is you can either tape off your top, which I never do. I will just come back when I'm done and I can wipe the paint right off this little edge right here. So I'll finish painting tonight and then I'll come back and do this while my paint is still fresh. If I leave it to cure, it's going to be hard to get off. See, I could just wipe that off and I've got a nice clean edge right there. I never take my edges off. That may be, I have plenty of bad habits, guys. Yeah, it separates into a thinner drip. And then, then it, I've got my colors peeking through. So I've got some chocolate here. So let's come over to this section right here because I feel better about this like this one spot right here so what I'm trying to do is not um, not over focus so I did this section first and then I came down and I'm working this section here and then I'll come back and I'll work my whites 
because I'm going to dry brush over some contrasting colors there. And I'm just working one section at a time. So I'm going to come here. This is my base of chocolate. I'm going to give myself with water. Water's the red. I like what's going on over here. I don't want to mess it up. I'm going to brush vertically. I mean, even just that gives you a really pretty line using very, not very much paint. I already have covered. I just need enough paint that it can run into each other. So I'll brush myself kind of a messy edge. And then this is my stormy seas. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to get in up here because I want it to go all the way up into this crack. Get in up here under my lip. I'm going to cut this in. Now, my brush with my Stormy Seas will get some of the uh, coffee bean on it. I don't want to bring the coffee bean up here. I'm not trying to do that. I want to let a little bit of the chocolate show through in between. And then once I feel like I've got a pretty good start to it, now I'm going to let it run. That was just brushing. A mist of vinegar. I don't want it dripping all the way down to the ground. I just want to soften up this line right here. Watch it run. Oh, that's a good finger right there. See how it gets these fingers in it? Now it's not dripping very well right here. I'm going to add a little bit more of my vinegar. There we go. Now that's going to start running. I don't want it to go all the way down. So once it runs to a certain point, I'm going to brush it back up. I'm going to say, whoop, sorry guys. I'm not going down there. And get right here on this line in between small sections at a time because I need to control how the paint is moving. So see how it peels back and I can see the chocolate underneath? I want a little bit of that. I want some of those spots right there. It's dripping all the way down. I don't want that. So then I'm going to come back with my coffee bean. I mean, I don't want to take away all this because I, I want that drippy separated look. It looks like lightning. It looks like lightning bolts how lightning kind of fingers out as it gets closer to the ground. That's what the paint does. So I've just brushed it back up and kind of tell it, nope, that's where you're stopping. And it's going to dry pretty quick because it's really thin paint. So then it's going to dry in the spot that I stopped it at. And I'm going to come down here and do the same thing with the coffee bean into the French linen. It is cool to watch, huh? I know, just watching the paint move, but but knowing that you have control over how it's gonna drip too. So I'm gonna go ahead and brush my uh, French linen down here, but I'm gonna dry brush all this. I'll move you guys down. I'm gonna dry brush all this with some sawmill gravy over top. See how it's just kind of frozen in place up here? And it's got a, some kind of thick drips. So I'm gonna brush them out. Just, just the tips, just, just the ends of the drip to stop it. And now I'm going to let my uh, coffee bean and my sawmill gravy go into each other. Not so much vinegar that it's just dripping onto the floor. So I use the vertical brush strokes because that tells my paint I want it to run up and down. If you have horizontal brush strokes, it's going to cause the paint to spread this way your vertical brush strokes are gonna tell it you want it to go vertically. Oh, it is a 70s pottery design, but that's super popular, Mandy. If you go to like Home Depot, they've got all those pottery designs out right now. And then here where it starts to puddle, I just brush away the puddle. I don't want puddling. It's a design. So I like how this separated and left me some um, chocolate. See, I gotta back you guys up or you can't see all of it. But it's kind of a naked spot. I'm gonna soften that up a little bit. Water on my paintbrush so that my paint stays. I'm just gonna give myself a little bit more stormy seas right there. 
let it run into that spot naturally so it doesn't look touched up there we go it's moving so I just sit here and watch how it's going and then I will correct the little spots this does leave texture in your paint it will have little raised pieces it's kind of a grungy look though so that's okay it's moody it's um, and then up here okay so it's going too far I know I don't want it to go this far so I'm going to brush this back up it's still going to continue to run but I kind of like that how it goes down deeper right there no nope, it still wants to run and I don't want it going down that far On this little spot right here you like that spot yeah I still have some chocolate peeking through got chocolate peeking through here but I know that I don't want chocolate to be my dominant color it's got to just be peaks that is not a color chocolate was not a color that the customer wanted so and then I am taking this basting brush yes a kitchen basting brush Trying to read my comments at the same time probably not working see this is why it's hard to go live on camera too because this takes me 10 times longer than it would if i was just working i'm going to take this basting brush and i'm going to take a little bit of vintage duck egg just a little bit of vintage duck egg and i'm going to let these two i'm going to let it look like some Some softer spots there now that's a little harsh so then I just take my vinegar and I let it I mean it's I'm using so little vinegar I'm gonna let that run now and it's gonna soften the paint up into each other drip mark I don't want it's getting too drippy there we go I can control those nope 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 So I added a little bit of that lighter color. It's running up here. Let me get that under. But I don't want it going up under this lip right here. So I'm going to brush that out. So I just sit here and I work little spots at a time. And I brush this strip back. Don't want it. Pick and choose which ones I like and which ones I don't. Control my paint. And then if I feel like that's consistent with my with the rest over here, my sister's trying to call me. Girl, it's 200 degrees. Yeah. Um, why vinegar, not water? Because vinegar makes the paint separate. It gives me a different kind of drip. And I can't even explain it. You're not going to be able to see it on camera. You'll see, you can see it in the finish. You can see it in the finished piece, but until you play with the vinegar at home, you're not going to really understand. It makes the paint run differently. Okay, I'm going to come over here and start working this. This is just water. The red is water. The, and that's just because I want to keep my paint from drying. Now around this circle, I do have to go like this just to get in around this edge because I can't do it with a vertical brush stroke. But I do that and then I can come and kind of brush that back out. That vertical brush stroke tells the paint how I want it to run. It like sets up the highways for it to run on. This, I don't want to cover all of the inside. I am going to use gilding waxes and stuff too. too drippy that one mark right there I didn't like it go back where you came from back where you came from okay. better and 
in here. I'm just kind of getting it a little bit haphazardly and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to soften it up with some um, vinegar. So that was my um, coffee bean. Bring Stormy Seas. Oh, you're welcome, Jeanette. So one thing I want to say to you guys is every time I post something, I know there's always an appetite for videos. I can't video every single piece I do, guys. I would never get anything done. Like I said, it takes me 10 times longer to do something on camera. So sometimes I need to just paint. If it's something I don't have a video on yet, you know I'll do it. Like this is a look I've already done. You guys liked it. I know you want a video. I didn't do one last time. I always do. I always fill in that spot. But I feel like there's no patience right now for letting us paint and not being ferocious with the, where's the video? Where's the video? Where's the video? Where's the video? It's, it drives me nuts, honestly. It always happens. If there's not a video in the post, know that it's gonna come eventually. Sometimes you just gotta be patient because you know, we're working on customs, we're working on all kinds of stuff and we can't put everything we do on camera. It, you know, it, I'd have to have a live feed. <laughs> That's not happening, so. So that is a thought I wanna share. I think especially with people home right now, they don't understand that not everything we do is on a live feed, but we do teach all kinds of stuff. It just sometimes has to come in bites. And that goes for the whole Dixie Bell brand ambassador team. We're constantly teaching and learning ourselves. Oh my gosh, the time I spend teaching myself. So now I want this Stormy Seas, almost said vintage decade, to run into my coffee bean. It makes the coffee bean run a little bit too. This is a little too drippy. I don't like that spot right there. I'm going to brush it back. I think my coffee bean dried a little too much. And see, this is what happens when I get talking too. Makes it hard to get a paint finish right. When I needs my attention and I'm talking. So I can't stress enough the need for patience. If there's not a video in my post, check my YouTube channel. If it's not there, I haven't made it yet. I always do, so patience. Oh, that was my wrong water bottle. Yes, Jody. sometimes people forget. This is vinegar and water. If you see the red, that's just water, but I am using vinegar tonight. This is a 50-50 mix of white vinegar and water. Okay, my paint's set up a little bit, so I need to tell it I want you to move. Nope, it's not time to... Relax, you need to move. So I'm just gonna help it and then I'm going to spray it again. Get into this corner. All right, so I'm gonna let it do its thing for a minute and then I'm gonna come back and see where I need to babysit. I mean, a little spritzes of the vinegar. This is Stormy Seas at the top. It looks really white on camera, but it's actually blue. What does the vinegar do? It makes the paint run differently. You've got to just play with it. That's all I can say. If you're, if you're not understanding, then take some vinegar and let your paint run. And look at the difference between a water drip and a vinegar drip. It's a chalk mineral paint. The paint will separate. The minerals, the textures in the paint, the little minerals in it, the, I don't know, particles, cause the paint to run different when it encounters vinegar. Play with it. So now I'm going to come down here while this is doing its thing, and I kind of like it. See, I get really smaller drips. It's like lightning bolts. But I don't want it going down that far. So I'm going to stop it. And then it's going to dry on my piece. And I don't really have to do a whole lot. Keeping my brush wet because my brushes want to dry in the heat. 
Gotta keep you guys back. I know you want to see the drippiness, but then you can't see what I'm doing. Okay, so while this is up here doing its thing, I don't like this spot. I'm going to come down here and start this bottom section. You have to be aware of what colors you put underneath because those are gonna show through. So like in this case, that's just water, just to get my paint on. Um, in this case, I use colors underneath that were just slightly contrasting. Chocolate and sawmill gravy. And I'm putting coffee bean and French linen over top. So just slightly different, but enough that when they run into each other and the colors underneath peek through, I'm going to give this a brush just to get into this crack right here and then I can come back and I want to give myself a messy and I kind of want my paint a little bit thick going on so so the paint doesn't thin out so much and not run I want it to get runny I'm painting my hinges this is a grungy I'm going to paint in here but I am going to come back and I'm going to dry brush in um, some sawmill gravy so but I have to let this coat dry. I think I'm gonna need my coffee bean to be a little wetter. It's not gonna run as dry as it is right now. This is dripping too far down. I'm gonna push it back. Sometimes you have to let the um, vinegar sit on the paint and then it'll reactivate and then you can come back and spray it again and then it'll start dripping. So here it's going. So I'm just working step by step. But see how it, I lay, it layers the colors? The coffee bean, the sawmill gravy, and the French linen are all in here. It's got one drip that I don't like, this dark spot right here. I brush it back. So it's not running right here. And I'm gonna wet, I freshen up my coffee bean. It's like it wants to take a nap and I'm like nope you've got to come out and play your job here is not done wake up so I just give myself some fresh paint there we go and guide it you can use a dry brush you can use an artist brush whatever you need to use to guide your paint where you want it to go I don't want that light spot there I had a little bit of French linen on my brush so I'm just gonna brush it out soften it out So I'm going to back you guys up so you can see across the whole front of it right now. Here's kind of where I am. Okay. Chelsea, I'm reading. I'm just grateful for the videos y'all do. You don't have to, but you take the time learning. And Thank you very much. I think that's what's being forgotten is like the amount of time that we spend teaching ourselves to. I take hours and I play with the paint and make it do stuff and what works and what doesn't work. And um, that stuff takes time too. And so then when we put a video out and it took us six days to learn and, and all we hear is, where's the video? Where's the video? And we're like, whoa, dude, I just learned how to do this. What color is the legs gonna be? So the legs are gonna carry this, the whites are gonna go down into the bottom. When I say whites, I've got sawmill gravy and French linen down here. It's a little messy looking right now because I'm not even, working that section. I'm just going to keep, I don't want my uh, coffee bean coming quite this far down. So I'll just keep that nice and clean for right now. And then I've got great moldings down here. Um, this is not a look if you need perfection and you don't like texture 
if you like really clean looks, this is probably not going to be your thing. It's anything but that. But do you guys see all that movement in the paint down there? That is not going to happen with water. That is not going to happen with water. I've got, you know what I did do is I didn't spray in here. My paint didn't move. I'm looking over there. I'm like, wait, that's way softer. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to take and brush this out so my coffee bean is fresh again. The paint will reactivate with water. So I just gave it a little vinegar and it's going to stay inside the circle, but that will soften it up. Actually, I'm going to um, take a dry brush and get that paint moving a little bit. And that's going to stay inside the circle. And I just made a big drip here. Guess what? If it drips all the way down, I'm going to come back and I'm going to clean that up. Like, I don't want water pooling. Well, I say water, but it's actually vinegar. I don't want it pooling in this crevice right here. So I just brush it out. And I'll let that run because it's coming from here where I want the paint to move right now. I do want a little bit of my darker color coming down so it's not just pure but not right here just brush it out just mix back into the paint so the legs i will dry brush and bring out all these moldings i told you guys i'm going to have this is going to be like a compass rose these letters will be painted and i'll have a compass rose stenciled on here and then i'll have you know north south east west and a nautical paper on the inside Yeah, these colors are really pretty. I like the blue. So I'm gonna use, this is just the paint layer. I'm gonna use glazes to get into all these details. I'm gonna use gilding waxes. I'm gonna use all kinds of stuff, but this is just the paint layer. So I'm gonna come do this side and then I'm gonna have to get off because I mentioned to you guys that I start losing my light for photos and I have some photos I need to take today. So we'll do one more side and then we're gonna be done. Yeah, Tammy, try it. Play with your paint. Play with your paint. I mean, you got to imagine that some of the stuff you see the brand ambassadors do has taken us years to learn and playing with a lot of paint. And that's why Dixie Bell supports us having the paint, playing with the paint, learning with the paint so we can teach you. But sometimes there are just things you have to do for yourself to see what happens. This will probably be easy for you guys to see what's going on. But I'm going to messy brush in with vertical brush strokes. Kind of deciding where I want my coffee bean to end and my um, stormy seas is above that. I'm going to let some of my undercolors peek through. That's why I chose these undercolors so they could peek through and they just complement. But I knew putting this base coat on that these were not the colors I wanted to use. So when you put your base coat on, choose colors that are not the colors you want to use. Just ones that are complementary and could peek through a little bit. Because the vinegar is going to thin your paint out. And it's going to make bare spots, like little bald spots in your paint. Okay, so that was my coffee bean, which is, that's a cool look on its own. And I'm going to come get up under here, under this lip. This I am going to brush just because I want to get coverage under this lip. I'm using water right now. I have not introduced any vinegar because I'm not trying to make it drip. I'm just trying to keep my paint wet. just want to get under this lip of my top. That's just a nice clean edge that's going to be all vintage duck egg. Okay, now I can come it doesn't have to be a solid I mean even this is a really pretty look. That's a really pretty look too. I've seen those done with like gold leaf in there and stuff. It's really pretty. I call that kind of an ecot spelled I-K-A-T an ecot pattern would look like that. You guys know what I'm talking about? It's like a fabric, a woven fabric pattern. Oh. 
rainbow colors. Yes, you could make them all run into each other. That would be really cute on like a, a yeah, that would be a really bright, fun, colorful piece. Okay, once I've got my paint, it's still nice and wet. I'm gonna find my vinegar bottle first. Vinegar, 50-50 white vinegar and water. Okay, and I'm gonna spray it. See, I'm trying to read my comments. And I'm gonna miss my spraying opportunity. I'm gonna give the paint a second to reactivate. Not so much that it's gonna drip all the way down. Okay, it's going right here and I'm just watching it. And guess what? If I hate it, if it sucks, I can come back and put my paint back on and try it again. My first tries with uh, vinegar became big soupy messes and puddles all over my floor before I learned that I can control it. See, it's like a race. It's like a race. Now they're all racing to the bottom and I'm going to tell them, nope, nope, you're out, out. I just soften these lines up. I don't want them dripping all the way down my piece. That is not the look I'm going for. I don't do drippy. Even my most random looks have uh, organization and symmetry. So those ones that over there that are going too far. Hey, Joe. If, yeah, there you go. Joe knows. I-K-A-T. It's a traditional fabric pattern, texture, weave, whatever you want to call it would look kind of like this. So I want, let me bring you guys in here. All this movement that's in here, all this movement in here, I don't want this. I don't want it looking drippy. This is my brush for my coffee bean. I'm just brushing those drip marks back up. Can you see how it gets texture in the paint too? It's not gonna be a perfectly smooth, even surface. Your mom wore that. Yes, oh my gosh, and it came back. It came back, like not, I mean, it came back fiercely, not that long ago, Very, it's very bohemian. It would've gone with like your macrame and all that, like that's the era that I would've pictured that in. But it's very traditional, obviously. Okay, I'm gonna come down here, we'll do this, and then I gotta get off, guys, because I am gonna lose my light and I need to take a picture, in fact. I'm gonna ask my kids to help me, so hang on. Oh, Ladon! Ladon! Ladon, you guys, if you don't follow Ladon, go to Ladon's Recreations. Ladon is the queen of working with paint and vinegar. She paints like stuff that I could never recreate, and it amazes me. This is basic in comparison. Hey, you guys, I need four chairs. The chairs that are around the table, can you bring them out to me, please? No, I need to take pictures of Miss Wright's table. Okay, sorry, I had to go enlist some child labor. Does painting with a rag work? Oh my gosh, Erin, Erin, you know what you're doing. Erin, uh, Erin's with, uh, uh, you t you change your name and I have to remember, Bowtie Treasures. It's not Tuesday anymore, but I keep wanting to say Tuesday. And yes, here's what I'll say. Paint with a rag. Paint with a sponge, paint with a brush, paint with a spatula, paint with a credit card, paint with a basting brush. Where's my basting brush I had out? Oh, uh, here. Paint with a basting brush, paint with all these different things because they all make the paint move differently. And I'm a huge fan of non-traditional painting tools and the looks that you get. Go watch people do work on canvas. You have to get a little bit creative if you want something different. Now, there's nothing wrong with a very traditional single solid color paint finish. But if you want those artistic decorative finishes, then you got to try different things. And Erin, you know what you're doing. Um, I'll, uh, Lynn, I'll lightly sand, just like I would lightly sand any finish. I'm not going to try to sand the texture out of it, but I will just sand... You know, so it feels smooth for a top coat to go over it, if, if that makes sense. Just the brushing that I usually do with any finish. Thank you, guys. 
I'm enlisting my kids to get me staging props. Okay, I'm brushing out some of these drips. I'm also giving myself fresh coffee bean. Pat the drip, yeah. I already have coverage on my piece, guys. I'm not d using this paint for coverage. I want it to do something in particular. Okay, so now I've got fresh French linen, fresh coffee bean. Move! Go! Now I'm going to let it drip. I mean, this is cool by itself. I think the drips thin the paint out in spots. Like, I can see... See my coffee bean peeking through? The drippiness does that. See how the paint moved? It's a little grungy. Are you taking pictures of the table I'm working on? I am, Lori. The table that I'm working on, um, I don't do dining tables because they take up my entire workspace and I've had this dining table for like two weeks now. It's taken up my entire workspace for two weeks. I only would do a dining table for someone as special as this person is to our family. It was a teacher that my son had my middle son had three years ago and she is um it, it's 50 50 white vinegar and water valerie 50 50 says vinegar but it's white vinegar and water and i will probably um, i still have the other side to do and then the legs and stuff i'll i'll come close to using near all this so see how my paint is moving down here this moved it's layered over I want that to move. That spot needs to go. I'm going to let it do its thing. And then where it, it's going to start puddling right here. I don't want that. Got to go. Bye. Brush that out. I really like how this is dripping. I really like this. It's layering over itself. Uh, that's a little barren right there. But my coffee bean is dry. I'm going to give myself a little bit of fresh coffee bean. See how very deliberate this is? Like, I'm controlling everything this paint is doing right now with my brushes. I'm working small sections at a time. You know, and I'll diagnose. Oh, I don't like this little spot that's only the size of a quarter. What do I need to do? Um, okay, it's dripping. I actually really like what the side is turning into. And then when I get down here to my legs, see I've got great moldings in here. I'll dry brush all this. It's going to have some glaze in it. I have two water bottles out. This is just water. Red is just water. This is my vinegar. 50-50, white vinegar and water. Okay, so now it dripped. I feel like this, uh, I don't even really want to change any of it. This I did good. I, mean, I am going to brush out this little... Um, this crevice fills up with my, and I don't want it to just be a puddle in there. I'll go ahead and brush it down here. I actually kind of like everything this side did. I don't really want to change it. Even this spot's a little dark, but I don't, I don't know. I might regret this. No, that's okay, huh? That's pretty. Okay, that's my side. Okay, so the table that I'm going to be um, staging is a dining table that I did for a very special person to our family. It was a teacher my son had. She um, helped him out incredibly. She showed me what... Um, I'm going to cry when I talk about her. Um, she showed me what the dedication of a teacher, the difference that that can make for a kid. So she gave me her family's dining table that they've had since 1961. Her parents got it in 1961. And she's redoing it for her daughter's first apartment. Oh, I'm such a crier. Why? So I don't usually do dining tables, but she's somebody that I would not hesitate to do a dining table for. So I'm doing it for her daughter's first apartment and I finished it up. It's really cute. It's sitting behind me. 
I need to go take pictures. I'm losing my daylight. This is the perfect time of day for me to take pictures. I don't have shadows. It's a little bit murky. This is when I usually take my pictures. So, and that's important too, when you're taking photos and you're using natural light in your windows, if your staging area is outdoors, um, is to learn the time of day that you get the best light. Teachers make a difference. Yes, Dana, my, um, my middle son has an IEP, which she helped us get because she recognized that he just, he learns differently. Um, so, so, you know, he doesn't have a disability or anything. He just learns differently. And it took a teacher to recognize that. And pull, she, she literally would journal him every day and things she tried and what the results were. It was amazing. So, See, I cry because she's amazing. So she's become a friend to us. She asked me to do her, her table. So anyway, I'm going to let you guys go. That's vinegar and water. Go play with your vinegar and water. Get two paint colors in a cabinet door and let the paint run into each other and control it and brush it back and let it drip and run and whatever you need to do to get comfortable with what the paint does. I'm brushing out. That, that crevice at the bottom wants to keep dripping. Um, but I'll show you guys again. I'm gonna turn my camera around. Oh, don't look at my table. That's not what you're supposed to see. It's not staged or anything yet. <laughs> so this is where I am. Very controlled, but very haphazard at the same time. That's what makes it so cool. And then the front of the piece. So imagine it, like I said, it's going to have the compass roses around the centers, some dry brushing, some gilding waxes to really bring out those moldings. Um, really pretty. Okay, that's my look. That's all I've got. I've got to go. You guys have a great night. Uh, be <laughs> Did I make you cry? I'm sorry. I'm such a crier. Um, be respectful of your brand ambassadors and understand uh, things are crazy right now and um, we are working uh, our businesses have boomed since people went online and they went home and they want to craft and we are exhausted and we are um, loving it at the same time but working our tails off so if you have to wait for a video wait for the video just wait sometimes it's not out yet go look on our YouTube channels you guys can has a search function you can search a word you know when I title this look I would put vinegar in the title so if you want to see what paint does with vinegar you search vinegar with brush by brandy on YouTube and you would find it just the same so there's hundreds of videos on there all right you guys have a good night thanks for hanging out